Welcome everyone to my review of the new Samsung 970 EVO Plus M.2. Today we're taking a look at the 500 gigabyte version. It also comes in 250 gigabyte, one terabyte, and more recently the two terabyte version has been released. Make sure to go back and check out some of our other Samsung SSD reviews. And if you take a look at our build logs, we've been using Samsung drives for many years now. So there's a lot to compare to. You can go back and look at many different Samsung SSDs generations being used in many different test scenarios. And we always include test results, performance results towards the end of our build logs. Currently, we're working on a system which has 10 Samsung 970 Pro 1 terabyte M.2s, eight of them in RAID 0. So that's definitely going to give some interesting results and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to finishing that build. So let's go straight to the good news. On this new version, we're seeing performance improvements across all capacities across the board and also some power efficiency improvements. Samsung is using the same controller, the Samsung Phoenix controller, and also Samsung's 3-bit MLC VNAND, but the interface between the controller and the NAND has improved to DDR4 with an increase in bandwidth from 800 megabytes per second to 1400. Also a decrease in power consumption from 1.8 volts to 1.2 volts. But the main improvement here is Samsung's transition from their 64 layer 3D NAND to 96 layer. And they've also managed to decrease the thickness of the layers by 20% without impacting on write endurance. So let's take a look at the main specifications, the performance, just on the 500 gigabyte version, keeping in mind that the different capacities have different performance, the two terabyte, of course, being the highest performing. Also, I'm going to compare to the previous version. So sequential read 3500 on the plus, 3400 on the previous version. Sequential write 3200 compared to 2300 on the previous version. So a substantial improvement there. Random reads, 480K IOPS compared to 370K on the previous version, and random write, 550K IOPS compared to 450K on the previous version. Power consumption, again on the 500 gigabyte version, average 5.7 watts has increased very slightly to 5.8 watts, but the maximum has decreased from 10 watts to 9 watts. The improvements on some of the other capacities are more substantial. For example, the 250 gigabyte, the average has decreased from 5.4 watts to 5 watts, the maximum from 9 watts to 8 watts. So let's take a look at some benchmarks. These were done on the very high-end system that you're looking at here. The motherboard is the Asus Maximus 11 formula, and the CPU we're using is the Intel 9900K. We're definitely going to get the opportunity in the next few builds that we're doing and build logs to pit this M.2 up against many other drives for some more interesting comparisons. But this was a customer build and we were already using the Samsung 970 Pro 512 gig M.2. So it was just a perfect opportunity. And it was great to see what it could do against the Pro version because you could see it was just absolutely outstripping it, particularly in the sequential writes. So, I mean, against the previous Evo version, it's just a performance improvement on all fronts. So an excellent product and quite surprising to see the level of performance improvement. And with prices coming down the way they have been, there's just no reason not to grab one of these for your high-end build. 